Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Show number three on Eclipse Day. Adam Schefter reveals the real reason why the Jets have yet to trade Zach Wilson. We'll talk about that and much more. It's the Jake Asman Show. New intro, and it starts right now. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jet bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go on this fantastic Solar Eclipse Monday. Show number three on the day. If you missed it earlier, Cole Thompson joined us from Sports Illustrated for our first mock draft of the week. We did a seven-round mock draft in that show. Then we played just some comments from Stephen A. Smith talking about the Jets and their chances of winning the AFC East in the second show. And now we'll play you some comments from Shefty, Long Island's own Adam Schefter, talking about the real reason why the Jets have yet to be able to find a trade partner for Zach Wilson. But good news, Jet fans, it does feel like, according to Schefter, a solution to the Zach Wilson trade saga is finally coming. So without further ado, I say this. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We are approaching 37,000 subscribers. I want to thank the audience for being a part of this ride. We are presented by Huga House today. Get yourself a vintage cap. The hat that you see Aaron Rodgers always rocking, 15% off when you use promo code ASMIN at checkout. Once again, hugahouse.com, H-U-E-G-A house.com, promo code ASMIN at checkout for 15% off. Without further ado, let's hear from Schefter. He was a guest on the Michael K Show on 98.7 ESPN New York, and this was Adam Schefter giving us the latest on Zach Wilson. No, I think in the end they'll trade him. Um I think it might take some time for a lot of reasons. Look, it's really not hard to come up with this value. We saw Mac Jones go for a six. We saw Justin Fields go for a six. And I think we all would agree that Zach Wilson hasn't accomplished quite as much as Mac Jones or Justin Fields accomplished. And the issue really six. here is that there's about $4.2 million worth of money on that contract. So we could come up with a seventh round pick right now and just say, okay, it's a seven or we're flipping picks, whatever it may be. The question is, what are we going to do about that money? It's $4.2 million. Jets aren't going to want to pay it. New team's not going to want to pay it. Jets are going to hold out till some team pays some of that money. Other teams are going to say, hey, you're not going to carry him. You're going to have to release him. We'll give you something now. So I, I think we get an inflection point at the draft. You know, when there'll be some guy in round six or seven sitting there that the Jets want okay, we got to make this happen right now for Zach Wilson, if not before, if not before, where, okay, how are we divvying up the money? Because that's what it comes down to in the end to me, really. It's not about the value they're getting back. It's about the $4.2 million as much as it is anything else. So Adam Schefter is saying that by the end of the draft, expect Zach Wilson to be traded, not cut, traded. Look, The thought process all along, once you saw what Justin Fields went for, once you saw what Mac Jones went for before the Fields trade, was Zach Wilson's value is sixth or seventh round pick or pick swap sixth or seventh round pick. If all things were created equal money-wise, they're not though. Zach Wilson's going into the last year of his deal. No one's picking up his fifth-year option. So that $5 million left on his contract, it's hefty, $5.5 million. No one's taking it. So the the question then becomes, how much is a team willing to take on and how much are the Jets going to have to pay to get rid of Zach Wilson, essentially? 
Like, yeah, Schefter's probably right. They could do a seventh round pick swap or the Jets, you know, they trade Zach Wilson in a seventh and they get a sixth next year. And the Jets have to pay three of the $5 million left on the contract. That's where this is headed. So Schefter all but confirmed that. I, I mean, that's really where we're at. But he will be traded. He will not be a Jet. All right? There's a better chance that, you know, Rob from Glenhead starts at left tackle opening night that Zach Wilson's on the, the Jets roster. All right, let, let's call it for what it is. It is not happening. You know, Neil from Garden City's got a better chance of playing quarterback for this team than Zach Wilson does. He will not be a Jet. The Jets have told him they will be moving him. That has been made obvious. His home is on the market in New Jersey. His condo, whatever. But Schefter saying that is, I think, some positive uh, reassurance from the, you know, for this fan base that is somehow, you know, feeling like that, you know, Zach Wilson has like this voodoo spell over the Jet organization and somehow he's going to find his way on the team. And if he's on the team, he's like a cockroach you can't kill and he's going to play again. They will trade him. Or eventually they'll just cut him. Before we move forward, we have to send someone to the shadow realm. And that someone is Scott Atkins, who writes in, cannon of an arm and mobile. He's staying put. Finally, an offensive line to protect him and weapons to throw to. Scott, I appreciate your viewership, I do. But at the end of the day, you, sir, belong in the realm. And we will see you later. Goodbye. Into the shadow realm you go. I don't really look too much into like who we're going after and 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 all of this stuff. But as long as like we're not getting those Jets guys, like I'm good. Let's get this thing done. What you saying, huh? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We will see you later, Scott. We don't have time for Wilson truthers. It is over. The guy stinks. It's not personal, but we will move on. But ultimately, I think that's good news to hear that from Schefter. I, look, Joe Douglas has done well with trades. He deserves the benefit of the doubt with this one. If they could get anyone to take Zach Wilson, great. And if they if they could trade Zach Wilson and just not have to cut him, and even if they're eating some of the money, but it, it, instead of the five point five million in cap relief the Jets would get, if they could get two point five million in cap savings, fine. As far as where they're trading him, I mean. There's only a couple teams that I think would make any sense. Denver, I think, would maybe make some sense, depending on what they do in the draft. But we're talking about a third-string quarterback. See, that's what I don't think people realize. Go look at the amount of teams that have currently have number two quarterback signed. It's most of the league. All the league actually has at least two quarterbacks. So what team's taking on Zach Wilson and making, making him their backup? Like, if anything, he's competing to be a number two somewhere. He more likely than not is competing to be a number three somewhere, or he's on a practice squad. So it's slim pickings right now for Zach Wilson. There's a better chance we don't see Zach Wilson play again in the NFL than him start, if we're being honest. Like, there's a better chance Zach Wilson never starts for an NFL team than he starts a game in the NFL again. Seriously. I don't think people realize that. There is a better chance he never starts another NFL game then, then not. Seriously. So, that's unfortunately the reality. I wish he had more value. I mean, Joe Douglas fleeced Carolina into, get, into giving the Jets a second, a fourth, and a sixth. But there's not a single number two quarterback that Zach Wilson is better than right now, unfortunately. Tommy DeVito was a better quarterback than Zach Wilson. I'd rather Tommy DeVito be the number three quarterback than Zach Wilson. That's what we're talking about here. But he does have the physical talent, so hopefully someone wants him. And even if it's $2 million the Jets save on their cap, it's better than just eating $5 million. Either way, the Jets are not going to be able to unload him because if they could, they would have done it by now. But Adam Schefter believes he will be traded by draft night, maybe before then. Please, before then. I, I, I am tired of talking about this. It is enough. The fact that we still have Wilson truthers in this fan base is as sad as it gets. 
I will take a seventh and 2038 if that's what it takes to get rid of the guy. Because I it, it's over. It's enough. James writes in with our first super chat of today's afternoon stream. CTE Scott, LMAO, brain dead take. Scott might have seen. I, honestly, I, I, I got to stop making fun of the Wilson truthers. They might actually have CTE. So maybe, maybe I'm the problem here. You know what we need right now, folks? We need to take some calls. Gus Buster Hotline is open. If you haven't become an Asmaniac, you are missing out because one of our Asmaniac emojis is a lane train emoji. And you guys know when the lane train calls in, this show could go anywhere. So buckle up. Hi, how are you? Bruce Paul. That's good. Lane train. What's up, Lane Kerner? Good. Yeah, I mean, it, everything is good. I understand that. Yep, yeah, Zach Wilson is not going to come back. Um, so how do you feel about that? Of I feel great, Lane. You know, I, honestly, I've never felt better. Why? Why don't you think he's going to sign still with the Jets? Is it because he's not good? That'd be the biggest reason. You know, I would say the reason why he's not going to be on the Jets is simply he stinks. You know? Who said that? Oh, stinks? Yeah, same feeling. Yep. Yep. Bruce he stinks all stuff. He's not great, Lane. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'd rather you. Yeah, play I know. Jets. Yeah, maybe I said announce the draft picks. Number four draft will be take out and being drafted. <laughs> yeah, I said announce will be drafted next. Lane, I want you to announce a Jets pick. That would make my. That would make my. Yeah, life. I mean, who am I going to pick though for the draft? Uh, how, how about well, Kenobi? JJ McCarthy? No, we yeah. don't want. To Back. I want a receiver or I want an offensive lineman lane. Yeah. The guy that I said is Noble. Yes, I I'll take Knoble as well. Yeah. Um, because honestly, you sign him in two weeks is the draft. You sign him, it's gonna he he should be good going into week one. Yep. Um, and I know some other people might be want to be drafted also going into this year's draft in two weeks. Should be the draft. See, you're practicing. That's what going in for the first pick. You're practicing. Lane, I'm going to hit the sounder and you announce the Jets are drafting Kenobel, okay? Yeah, all right. Are you ready? On the 2022 draft pick, <laughs> the pick goes to Knoble out of college. But the good thing is, then they tell you who the players are from, and their families get excited. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, I know a lot of the football that for each pick. And um, yeah, so I guess we're just going to have to sit back and see who they pick. It could be a uh, a C, like a a QB, but I don't know if the Jets really want to pick somebody else. <laughs> Lay great call. Hi, sorry everybody. See you next call when we talk about sports again. Uh, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> I love you, Late. You're the best. That was great. Yeah. What what a draft pick. Uh, I don't know how we topped that one. That Lane, you are a national treasure. The Lane trade, man. Oh my god. Big fella's got a super chat for us as I try and regain my composure. <laughs> Jake, who do you see the Jets getting in the draft or free agent at running back? Izzy did not impress, and I don't think he's that guy. Knoble for president. Amen. We love Knoble. <laughs> um I look. I, I, Joe Douglas has drafted a running back every single draft. He's been the Jets GM. I think if you're doing a mock draft and you're not having one of the Jets' fourths or their sixth or their two sevenths be a running back, you're probably missing out because they typically will take a running back. I, I have not watched the film on college running backs because I watched the film on Brees Hall a couple of years ago because he was thought to be a first-round guy. So I remember looking into that. But I, I don't know who they're going to draft at that spot. I will say, is he 
didn't really get an opportunity to impress. They barely played him. I mean, the fact they stuck with Dalvin Cook as long as they did was a joke. Notice, guess who can't get a job right now? Gee, I wonder why. Think about, think about how shit, by the way, excuse my language, but that's really what the only word that's appropriate. Think about how bleep the Jet offense was last year that Dalvin Cook can't get a job. Dwayne Brown can't get a job. Makai Becton can't get a job. Connor McGovern, we love him. Backup, can't get a job. I hope they bring him back, but he was a starter for the Jets. All right, Lincoln Tomlinson. Oh, they can't create the hole with Lincoln Tomlinson. Oh! Bunch of nonsense that was. Replaced him with a guy half the cost in John Simpson, who's better. Can't get a job, by the way, Lincoln. No, these guys all were terrible. Zach Wilson, no one wants him. Tim Boyle, I think he's on the Texans practice squad right now. He's on a futures deal with them. Trevor Simeon can't get a job. Uh, I mean, other than Garrett Wilson and like Brees Hall and Tyler Conklin, can any Jet starter besides like the two guys they drafted on their O line, Tipman and ABT, get jobs in the league right now? Seriously, that's how pathetic this offense was. Randall Cobb can't get a job. I mean, he only had a job because Aaron Rodgers is his godson, is his son's godson. I mean, like, let's call it for what it is. Unbelievable. Super Chats will continue to cut the line. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now is a man who looked at the solar eclipse directly in the eyes and is still here to tell us about it. Hello, Gary. I can't see you because I am fully blind now because I looked at the sun, but I can, mm -hmm. I can hear you. Well, that's good because I'm sure you're going to give us, you know, some takes that, quite frankly, are, are going to injure our ears as well. No, well, yes, but, but first, no. So I, I was just messing around on YouTube, and I came across the 2015, I think it was, double Hail Mary Rodgers threw against Arizona. Yep. That guy plays for the Jets now. So we could talk about Zach Wilson, but, like, that guy who threw the two Hail Marys and was it, like, 35 seconds against Arizona, he plays for the Jets now. So that's pretty good. And then I got to thinking about Zach Wilson and, and Jake. I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here. I got a – this guy's got nine lives. I got a bad feeling that this guy – No, Gary, Gary, stop. Stop it. Don't even suggest that. I'm not I, – I, I can't do it. Goodbye. Knockouts don't matter if you're landed of jabs. All right, give me – give me – Lane, call back. I can't deal with Gary. Good God. Super chat from James. James writes in. Out of the box, but what about the trade to the 20s for a 2020 for a 2025 first? Take an offensive tackle like Mims, hold the future first for a big time wide receiver trade like Lamb or Ayuk. If that opportunity exists and you tell me the Jets have first round grades on a bunch of these tackles, I'm open to that, James. It's not it's not a bad idea. My question would be, how do we know the Jets are guaranteed to get Mims if they move back that far? Like, what if the Bengals take him at 18 and that's the Jets guy? Then what? What if you run out of tackles they believe in? What if they don't love Tyler Guyton? If they like these guys, I'm in. I'm in. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. Uh, but as far as trading for Lamb or Ayuk, I mean, does anyone actually think the Cowboys are going to deal CD Lamb in an all-in year? Does anyone actually think that's going to happen? Like, I, I don't see it. So, we'll see. John writes in, how long until... Hold on, I hit the wrong... God damn it, Alan. Your chat coming up is a nightmare for me. Clicked it by accident. John writes in, how long before Jake does a 24-7 Jets live stream? Well, our draft coverage is going to feel like 24-7. We're going to be live all day long during the three-day event that is the NFL draft. I mean, the entire draft night, night one, night two, and then day three will be live. We'll have shows in the morning each day, recapping things, looking ahead. I mean, it's going to be content, content, content. Jeremy's watching the show. He says, Koontz tight end one. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I don't know about that one. But I appreciate your support, Jets Chaos. Let's get back to your calls right now. 
Ladies and gentlemen, joining us on the line right now is a caller I'm not quite familiar with. Maybe he's a first timer. Jay Coleman up next. Hello, Jay. Hey, Jake. We spoke uh, a couple weeks ago. I was your first caller. Um, first time caller, I should say. All right, so uh, this is number two, then. Yeah, it's number two for me, man. Yeah, absolutely. Happy Monday to you. Happy Monday <laughs> to you. Now, did you spend time watching the eclipse, or what did you do? Yeah, I, I went outside. I wanted to see what all the hype was about, and yeah. I was so disappointed. It, it yeah. bored me to tears, to be honest with you. I worked straight through it, so I missed the whole thing. <laughs> it got a little dark. I mean, it really – Yeah. I was very disappointed. I really was. I was, so. I was expecting more, but it really yeah. was too much. I think a lot of people were expecting more in some respects. But, hey, man, I think I saw an article. I can't remember where I saw it. Was it ESPNplus.com or something like that? That had a trade scenario for Zach sending him to the Broncos for Cortland Sutton, Gordon Sutton and a third-round pick. I can't remember where I saw it, but I saw it. I was like, are you serious? Is it April Fool's? What's going on? <laughs> this is too good to be true. What's going on with this thing? <laughs> no, no chance. If, if they can get that for Zach Wilson, I mean, they like I, I like Joe Douglas should call me. I will drive him to the airport personally. Like, it's not happening. Joe Douglas is robbing teams with a gun, man. I'm like, he's straight up robbing them, man. I love it. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think, I think Zach will exactly be dealt. Uh, yeah, I think Zach will be dealt during the draft, though. Um, Probably a late fourth, maybe somebody somebody get desperate enough to say, "Hey, I've got probably two quarterbacks. I probably need a third and uh, grab him or something." I mean, he'll, he'll go he'll go on a ninety nine cent pile. So you know, it's it's no biggie. <laughs> anything to trade him is a positive from the standpoint of like if you could just save anything on your cap, you're not going to save a ton, but if you could just save something on the cap like it's yeah. better than nothing that's that's kind of yeah. where we're at right now with yeah. you know their their limitations we're trying to deal the guy unfortunately i agree but i don't i don't buy Woody johnson he's posturing when he says oh we're gonna keep him he's a resource yeah yeah he's part of jet blue family we, we know your angle woody we know where you're coming from woody you can't fool us <laughs> jay he's the same guy and thanks for the call man he's the same guy that ripped him at the NFL honors and then tried to put the toothpaste back in the tube being like, Oh, you know, he's a valuable asset. It's like, you already said what you said, man. We all understand. We all, we all, we all heard you. We all know what, what happened. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Dano became an as maniac, I guess his membership for the month expired. And now Dano's back. Welcome Dano. Welcome. We need another 20 members or so to add a new emoji. What should our next emoji be? There's a, a lot of people have different ideas on what should be coming next. Sko writes in, can you go live for a Jets game, please? Sko, that will be the last thing I ever do. The things I say during Jets games are appalling. My YouTube channel would cease to exist, and I would just, I won't do it. All right? You guys see how mad I get on these post-game shows. Now imagine me during the game. All right? I can't control myself. So I don't know how the green beans of the world do it. Richie, I I can't. Nightmare. More of your calls right now. Sneakers to Boots is on the Gus Buster umbrella hotline. What's up, Sneakers? What's going on, Jake? Happy Total Solar Eclipse Day. Man, I got my sunglasses on earlier. I was expecting I was expecting a lot more. Like it was like slightly darker than normal, is what it felt like. So by me, it was clear out the whole entire day. And as soon as it was about to be like in its totality or whatever, around like 3.30, the clouds just rolled it right in and covered it. I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> Typical. But, yeah, uh, not great. <laughs> not, not ideal. But uh, so I have to say, though, that Ga um, Gator, sorry, uh, that parody video that he made was absolutely sensational. One of the most hysterical things I've ever seen um, incorporating everybody in the show. So hats off the Gator for that. Keep up. He got everyone too. That's what's so amazing. Like, it's not like he's like, Oh, let me just pick three or four. I mean, he, he got like 25 minutes of just character after character from this show. It was amazing. Yeah, and all the new, new callers are calling in. So he's going to have to make a couple more videos. So that'll be entertaining to watch. Um, so for the draft, um, offensive line is the only option that I'm even entertaining. Even if Odunze is on the board, I would ideally want to trade back. I get it. We want the weapon. We want the shiny toy. But uh, Rodgers needs to stay upright. We don't have good luck. Anybody who has watched the Jets for the past 10 years, you know we suck at offensive line, regardless. <laughs> yeah. So if we if we draft that offensive lineman and they play one or two spots in a game in a pinch, that's awesome. That's what we need. 
I do trust Aaron Rodgers to kind of make um, everybody in the in the offensive room, like receivers, running backs, everybody better, um, just based off how he's going to run his scheme. Um, I get it. We need the weapon, but he made Alan Lazard a number one target run for 850 yards or whatever, and like eight or nine touchdowns. So even with him as a number three or four, I mean, hopefully four, we'll sign somebody in the free agency. Um I'll still take it. I mean, we do still need to score points, though, once it comes down to the stretch in the playoffs, because even those good teams, they're still scoring like 15 or like 17, 20 points when it, when it gets down to it. So we'll get we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I'll take a receiver in the third round. No hands. Uh, no doubt about it. But that's just my thoughts. O-line or die. That's it. Oh, O-line or die. All right. Look, I, 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 I like it. I get it. I get it. To me. If you could get O line and trade down, that's my best case scenario. If you're not trading up to get one of the big three, because I, I I said earlier, I think the Jets are doing something. I don't think they're staying at ten. I'll leave it at that. Even though in our mock today we couldn't find a trade party, we tried trading up, we tried trading back. It was ridiculous. I mean, maybe it was just the PFN simulator, but we couldn't find any takers in our mock draft for those who caught the first show of the day. But man, stuff sledding out there. Now, Sneakers the Boots brings up the Jets' luck with injuries, and he's right. They have terrible luck. But I will say, it seems like there is a consensus. You tell me the Jets stay healthy, they're going to win the AFC East. Right, Adam Schefter? If everybody stays healthy, are the Jets said, better than the Bills? If everybody – if is Aaron Rodgers healthy for 17 games? Yes. Tyron Smith healthy for 17 games? Mike Williams <laughs> healthy for seven? Yeah, I'll take the Jets. If everybody's healthy, give me the Jets. I would amend Schefter's comments and say, if Aaron Rodgers is healthy, I think that's enough. I mean, obviously, if the Jets' entire team around him gets hurt, that's different. But if the, if if you tell me the defense for the third straight year stays very healthy like it was last year, and Rodgers is healthy, and maybe you don't lead the NFL in offensive line injuries, you have some injuries, but it's not you know, carnage to quote the head coach for two straight years. I think the Jets could win the AFC East. I don't, I, I just don't think Buffalo and Miami have gotten better. They've gotten worse. I think the Jets, if they did nothing besides Rodgers is back, they're better than they were last year, a seven win team. And I think they're just as good as the bills or the dolphins right now. I do. Miami is fraudulent. They cannot beat good football teams. One and five. They can't. Also, I completely forgot this Yankee game started at 6, not 7. So I'm like, wait, is this a re-air of the game? And I just realized it's live right now. So, all right, Yankee baseball, baby. Here we go. Anyway, more of your calls right now. JR is up next. What's up, JR? Jake, how you doing? I'm great, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Happy Monday and happy solar eclipse. <laughs> well, what an eclipse it was. I was driving during it, and I was like, okay, it's like overcast. Um uh, Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's all it was. But, I mean, yeah, draft day coming up, obviously. I'm getting, you know, just nervous. Obviously, seeing the mocks, I mean, all over. They, they got us taking Bowers, which I love him as a prospect. For us, maybe not the most. You know, maybe even doing a trade back scenario, maybe. But, um, I mean, I'm with the um, – I say definitely O line, even though I do I do love Roma Dunze as well. I really do. I really think he can be as like a as far as the wide receivers, you know, one A Harrison, one B neighbors. I think he could be that one C. I love him. I've watched a lot of his games. His tape is amazing to me. So I wouldn't be mad at that either. But um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, I doubt he makes it to 10. He like I said, we could trade up. Uh, but as far as linemen, I'm I mean, I thought Alt would be there for the most part at 10. Who are you thinking that uh, it would be our next go? I think, the, the, I think the two names to watch at 10 would be Olo Fashanu, Talese, or I Really, I'll give you three names. Talese Fuaga, and I think Troy Fontanu is the other name to watch there. I think I think the question is how many offensive linemen go before the Jets pick at 10? It could just be all it could just be one. Right, could just be one. If it's two, then I wonder how the Jets grade Olu versus uh, Latham or Olu versus Fatanu. Like it's, but 
I mean, I don't know what their board looks like, right? Like we heard the rumblings that that, that Douglas loves Fawaga. They I also know they like uh Fontanu. So mm-hmm. could it be one of those guys, but does that mean they don't love Olu? Like, I don't know. So I don't know how their board is. I I think I think the good news is if they do end up just staying at 10, taking a line there, they can't trade back, they're gonna end up getting a, a really highly touted offensive line prospect because it's a stacked O line class. For sure. Yeah. Do you see us getting them even in a trade back scenario? Because I think they should. They possibly could be available. Definitely. But as we tried to do this morning, you still need a team to try and trade up. And like, I don't know who's coming up for what player. Usually it's quarterbacks. So four quarterbacks that go, though, in the top nine picks, less reason to think there's going to be a team coming up and, and making that move for the fifth quarterback off the board. Maybe, but it's less likely. Yeah, I just don't see Odunze getting past nine unless we, like I said, trade up. My buddy's a big time Bears fan, and that's all he wants, and that's all <laughs> that all their Bears fans are talking about for their second, uh, first pick. So I don't know. It should be interesting. I do trust um, uh, Joe Douglas. I mean, he does everything right draft wise. I say for the most part, he has some unluckiness, obviously, maybe outside of Zach, but uh, like I, said, I do trust Joe, man. He he, he does a good job for the most part. <laughs> We got to trust Joe. Good call, JR. Appreciate you, man. Call back anytime. Uh, A couple super chats to get caught up on here. John writes in. Anything is possible. A Henny emoji like Bowers at 10. We could create a Henny emoji if that's what the people want for our next channel membership. We're about 20 channel members away from that. So hit the join button. Become an Asmaniac if you haven't already. Gary has called back in. Let's go to Gary. 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 You staring at the eclipse, Gary? Uh, Gary. You can't look at it. It's not good to look at the sun. Is Gary just bitching about the eclipse? But this is no different than yesterday or tomorrow. Like, I, I, did you panic yesterday that you can't look at the sun when you were driving home in rush hour? Gary, I'm panicked. Gary, we got no clouds, we got no trees. (laughs) It's just sun on top of you. Gary, when you drive during sun, during sunset. Gary. Oh, I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> What's up, Gary? What's up, Jake? I, I I figured I'd come back to you. It sounded like you wanted to talk more about the eclipse. <laughs> I, was, I, I was on the phone with my parents. They were saying it went dark. I, I didn't really get dark. I, what, like, what, I, it's what like did a you cloudy get? day. It looked like overcast. I posted the picture in the, in the Discord. They, they live 40 minutes away, and they said it got like dark, dark, like black. You didn't see it. I didn't get that. I got like I said, put the picture in the Discord. It looks like okay. It it looked like the clouds came out. You know, like it looked like it was about to rain. Mm-hmm. Knockouts don't matter if you land enough jabs. Great call by Gary there. We had to, basically we had to give Gator some more material with that one. That's what that was for. <laughs> Gator writes in. Thanks to the clean background, Gary. There it is. Gator knew exactly what I was doing with that one. Love it. Uh, this has been a banner day of shows, folks. The rare three shows in a day, but it needed to be done. Become a Patreon member. You can interact with Gary fighting with people about the solar eclipse in our Discord. Patreon.com slash Jake Asmund Show. Adam says, I'm so embarrassed I screwed up my first Patreon chat. Now I'm screwing up Super Chats. Adam, I don't think you screwed anything up. But here's your Super Chat. I'm going to get to it right now. They can't trade Zach because he sucks. The only thing you screwed up is you, you forgot the H next to the Zach's name or in Zach's name. But they, you are right. They can't trade him because he's not any good, unfortunately. That, that That is the biggest reason. There's no doubt about that. Unfortunately. 
Uh, let's see. Any any other suit? We're going to end the show shortly here. So last chance to get in. Last chance to submit a super chat. Last chance to be an Asmaniac and get a shout out live on the show. Um, Alfonso says, Gary on the phone with the eye doctor. <laughs> Andrew says, this show is true entertainment. We try, man. Look, everyone understands when you do a daily show on a football team, when you only have football for 17 weeks out of the year, you got to come up with other ways to keep the audience entertained, right? That's why I say this is a show more so than just like a YouTube channel that covers the Jets. Like, yes, we predominantly cover what the Jets do, but we got a show. This is the show, baby. And the Asmaniacs lead the charge. They drive the content. Speaking of which, you know, yesterday, Gator McCluskey posted the first episode of the parody of this program, the fake ass man show. And perhaps we should play another clip from that tremendous, tremendous first episode, which last I checked has over 2,500 views. We actually learned what the Charles chicken soup recipe was, which I was thrilled to finally learn. I know what will spice this show up. Charles is up next. What's up, Charles? Hey, what's going on, fake? Talking all things Jets, Charles. How are you, pal? I'm good. I just had some of my mom's famous chicken soup. I'm actually ready to give you that recipe if you like. Damn straight. I, I can't wait. Uh, let's go. Okay, so you're going to want to write this down, right? So she starts with a live chicken, and you have to pull all the feathers out, but don't kill it in the process. Then you drop it in a boiling pot of water along with two tablespoons of motor oil. Be sure that it's not the synthetic oil because that'll set the kitchen on fire. Now the chicken's going to scream a little, but that's when you have to squirt hot Tabasco sauce right into its beak. The little bastard's going to gag on it and take it all in. Wait for the chicken to stop screaming and then watch as it releases its bowels and the water turns dark red. Put on some heavy duty gloves and squeeze the chicken's body until you get all that fluid out and the eyes pop out. Then just add two cups of prune juice and let it sit for two days. Reheat and you're ready to go. Man, that's it. Thanks, Charles. You got it, Fig. Hopefully that gets Lowski off my damn back. Hey, Charles, I need some of that chicken soup. This is my mom. Oh, sorry, guys. I need some of your mama's oh. chicken soup. She's a good woman. <laughs> Send it this way, Charles. Yeah, I know it's delicious. I need some of it. Hey, Charles, I, I need some of that mama. chicken Let's soup. I need some of it, Charles. You sitting up there seeing enchiladas. I need it, Charles. Where Stop is that, guys. Oh, the shit. recipe, Charles? Who are you having this conversation with? I'm on a live stream. With who? My friends. Uh, it just is unbelievable unreal tremendous job by gator everyone check it out if you haven't watched if you're an asmaniac i posted it early for you guys yesterday to see as well comments questions super chats last chance to get in don't like seeing judge into a double play there not great but all right let's keep rolling here um, Papa says Charles hates the chicken soup. Let it go. I will not let it go. I demand a recipe. Hey, Charles, I need some more of that chicken soup. I need it. Dave says legendary Lane Kerner call. This this was one of the look. Lane's got a lot of legendary moments. All right. Lane announcing the Jets draft pick for the 2022 draft today. That was right up there with any of them. Nate Hackett's watching the show. Unbelievable. No, the only thing that's unbelievable is that you needed to, to wait until week eight to learn that Brees Hall is tremendous and can catch the football out of the backfield. Hey, Nate Hackett, you stink. He stinks. All right. Thank God you know Aaron Rodgers' coffee order. All right, but your comment on Brees is deserving of this. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. 
Andrew says, if Charles didn't want us to talk about his chicken soup, then he shouldn't have gone on about it. I agree. Matias says, top five lane moment. Yep. Nate Hackett has apologized. I'm sorry. All right. You know, I accept your apology. Just win this year. Everyone's getting a fresh. Everyone's getting a clean slate in my book, Nate. All right. But if you guys don't win this they year. They should be shot. All right. They should be shot. Just saying. Kareem says, wait. Is that really him? Yeah, you didn't know that Hackett watches the show? I mean, of course he watches the program. Uh, Sneakers to Boot says, Jake, your monologues are great, but the unpredictability of this show is unmatched. Hey, that's why you got to tune into every, every show, because you never know who's calling in. Big fellow with a super chat. He cuts the line. Cha-ching. Who you got tonight in the finals? I like UConn. I'm done picking against them as far as like a team covering the spread against them. I'm just watch tonight be the night Purdue gives them a real game and they finally, you know, UConn finally gets tested and it's tied late and they don't cover. But I, I'm picking UConn. I mean, I, I I was with Alabama in the semifinal game. I thought they would play them tight and it looked like for a while they were playing them tight and then UConn just does what they do, and I'm done picking against them. So I'm going UConn. Papa says, beard game is proper. Looks good. Copper John's plug. Love it, Yeti. Appreciate you. Shout out to Copper John's. Um, let's see. King of Kings says, L-M-A-O. This whole episode had me crying. Gator plus weed equals laughing gas. LOL. Phenomenal work, Gator. Yeah, Gator did a great job with him, man. Dano says, you think Woody just had the TV in his office just idle or even worse with just Eric Allen playing on it? Uh, Woody's got the show on in his office, Dano. You know that. Snowball says, when's Rogers coming on the show? He is invited anytime he wants. All right. You imagine we got Rogers on this show. I mean, we had, we had Klecko and Revis on back-to-back days last summer. So you never know, but Hey, Aaron, I know you're out there. Let's make it happen. All right. We're going to wrap up here shortly. Last chance to get your super chats in last chance to be a part of it. Nice play by Anthony Volpe. Love that. Jerome is predicting a 14 and three jet season. Jerome, from your lips to God's ears. Joe Izzel, you go into San Fran this year. Depending on when that game is, maybe. I don't rule it out. I think I would prefer a trip that's closer than San Fran, but I've always wanted to go to San Fran. But the thing is, the Niners, they don't even play in San Francisco. They play far away. Boomtown says Islanders are going to need to bring it against the Rangers tomorrow. Well, Boomtown, the good news is I will be in the building. All right. I will be at UBS tomorrow for the big Islander Ranger matchup. Allen says big two points at UBS tomorrow. Got to go with our new number one Varlamov and net. I mean, Varley's starting tomorrow. We already know that. Aurora writes in. Jake, I really have no concern about J.D. with the Zach trade. I think he'll surprise us. Uh, look, we, we know Joe Douglas has made some trades before that come out of nowhere that we're surprised about. Morgan Moses, Hassan Reddick, two most recent examples. He got a fourth for Chris Herndon, though. So I hope you're right. But I got to be honest, when the leaked audio a couple of weeks, uh, uh, when the, the, the video came out, remember that leaked video that came out of Joe Douglas on the phone trying to trade Zach Wilson? It didn't sound too encouraging on the Jets being able to get much for him. Joe D here. Douglas? Yeah, from the Jets. Right, what do you got for me, sleepyhead? Look, I got a deal you can't pass up. I'm going to give you Wilson along with... Wilson? Huh? Garrett Wilson? No. Yeah, I'll take Garrett off your hands. Zach. Zach who? The QB. Oh. Right. Zach and we pay his salary, plus you get our third round pick this year and first next. Got to make a deal quick. These Asmaniacs are killing me on the socials. I mean, that didn't exactly sound promising. 
All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, I'll, I, I'll hold my breath on that one. Hey, if you're watching right now, all right, we have 386 people watching. How come there's only 166 likes? Do you not like this YouTube channel? Do you not like the New York Jets? Do you not like our great country, USA? Well, hit the like button if any of those things apply to you. I appreciate everyone who tuned in today. Really fun show. Um, obviously, we'll be back tomorrow. Robbie Sabo is back from vacation, so he's back in his weekly spot on the show. We did three shows today, so check out the other two. If you want more content, it was an absolute blast. I'm going to end by saying this. All hail the lane train, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. And speaking of the wonderful lane train, why don't we go back to where it all began? Let's go to Lane, who's up next. Hello, Lane. Hey. Oh, hi. Hello, Oops. Lane. How is everything? Yes. You're on the air, Lane. Oh, hello. Hello, Lane. Hi. So, yeah, I'm happy about the way the Jets played played today. And, you know, they moved the ball, and they did great. Look, okay. Who – and, I mean – I know it was raining out. Did you see the game? No, I didn't watch it. What happened? Well, they won. They <laughs> took, and the other team lost. Lay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Come on, man. That can't be a real call. <laughs> Lay, call back anytime, man. The Jets won today, by the way, folks. I don't know if you guys saw the game. <laughs> uh, God. Lane, this is for you. Cheers.